Full moon in Sagittarius on May 23rd. You ready for the auspicious, expansive, benevolent stuff to continue? It just keeps going. So we've been in this newer, truer cycle for a while. And this full moon is pushing us even more into transformation. Um, but a transformation that's aligned with your bigness. That's Jupiter. That's Sagittarius. So we want to think our bigness. So really feel into that. Your bigness your greatness. It's like the great becoming, full moon. It's illuminated, right? There's a lot of light shining, right? So just feeling into that. Sagittarius is higher thinking, expanded states. Sagittarius also points to expanded states of consciousness, right? Altered states of consciousness, bigger states of consciousness, bigger understanding of who we are, bigger understanding of let me feel for a second, of what we are capable of, of our possibilities, of our potentials in this life. There are some wild things going on. This could be a really interesting and strange episode. Um, so if like getting into, um, I don't know, like human potential transforming doesn't sound like your thing, this may not be the episode for you because I kind of just really want to go for it in this one. So here's how I'll kind of start this conversation. And I will get into the details of the astrology and how the astrology is pointing to all of this. But just give me a second. I need to like build a little bit of a foundation for us around this. Or like point to what this is all sort of pointing to. So this is like, there are hidden potentials within us. There are possibilities within us. There's dormant gifts. Feel into that. There's dormant gifts. There's dormant potentials to be switched on. It's like Kundalini awakening. It was a dormant potential that just needed to be woken up. But then once that was woken up, different um, capacities switch on. We have different abilities that we didn't have before. This is a moment in time where all things are pointing at turning on these sort of dormant abilities, these seemingly um, out there superpowers, right? These more mystical gifts, potentially, or spiritual gifts, we might think of them as, or, wow, I didn't think we could work with matter in that way. I didn't think I could work with my consciousness in that way. I didn't know my consciousness could disperse and then reform. I didn't know I had that much power over matter. I didn't know I had that much power over my physical reality. And this to me is what we are in at the moment. And I'll talk more specifically about this moment in time. Know that it's much greater than just this moon, this May 23rd full moon in Sagittarius. But that's kind of the overarching theme of what everything's pointing to. All of the outer planets are really, really intense. Actually, not all of them. Neptune's really intense. I'll talk about this in a minute. Pluto, really intense. But they're in really benevolent aspects. Neptune, Pluto are in stunning, supportive aspects to this full moon. What does that mean? Pluto, deep transformation. That's evolution of humanity. That's evolution of self. That's the evolution. That's soul evolution. Pluto's a soul point, right? Soul point, soul evolution. He sextile this full moon. Pluto, sextile the full moon. Like supportive aspect to our greatest evolution, our deepest transformation. Now here's the other wild part. Sedna. Sedna is at zero degrees of Gemini. Everything is moving into Gemini. Zero degrees is a fucking power point. It's a power point. Sedna is very slow moving. And I'm going to talk about Sedna myth in a minute because this is extraordinarily important. And big things could come for you when I talk about this in a second. Um, I hope big things come for you when I talk about this in a second. And I hope that I can deliver it in a way that it can really touch what it is that's happening for you because it's happening for all of us it's a it's a transformation of sorts and it's part of this stepping into our potential like what are you transforming into what is your newer truer expression what are these hidden gifts that are coming online for you and so just feel into this for for a moment um, zero degrees of gemini the sun has just moved past that the sun 
at this full moon will be at two degrees of Gemini. Sedna's at zero, right? So the sun has just crossed over Sedna. Venus will conjunct Sedna on this full moon. So Venus moves into Gemini right into Sedna on this full moon. Venus is conjunct Jupiter. Jupiter's about to move into Gemini and will hit Sedna. This is wild. A lot of astrologers are talking about Jupiter moving into Gemini. This is a thing. This is a thing. This is a big, big thing. <laughs> we'll talk about it. And, and this Sedna point, to me, is something that we don't want to miss. It's something that we want to meditate on if you're a meditator or just reflect on or just be here in this conversation around Sedna in a minute because I'll talk to you about what the transformation is um, and we'll kind of do it through the myth a little bit and we'll see what happens. Um, she's an archetypal energy. Uh, they're all archetypal energies. So every astrological point that we're talking about here, it's an archetypal energy. Archetypal energies, they exist within us, they exist outside of us, um, as within, um, as within, so without, as above, so below. And so we can let these um, points <laughs> um, inform and um, give us guidance and help us to access different parts of self and make sense of what it is that's maybe happening um, already, but we're not necessarily able to, to comprehend it or be really conscious of it. And that's part of what this conversation is about, is bringing more of this to consciousness, this transformation that, that's going on for all of us that we're looking at. The other thing I just want to point out is the enormous amount of solar flares. These solar flares that are happening right now, they weren't supposed to happen until 2025, right? These astrophysicists have spoken about this, right? It was going to be like astro flares, like all oh, this, like M-class flares, blah, 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 all this stuff. Um, and I'm not a super expert on that, but I do know <laughs> that they very much affect me and that they are something worth maybe just kind of paying attention to. Anyways, it's ramped up now, so it's coming early. To me, this is such a beautiful, wild alignment. Um, and it's also part of our own evolution and part of um, our possibility of opening up to the potentials in self or the possibility of switching on dormant forces within, right? Dormant forces within. Yeah, like what? I know, I know you have in the course of your life. So I, I, I want to ground this a little bit so it doesn't become like, glazing over and just like well this isn't for me like maybe for some people you know like some gurus in india can switch on mystical forces but this isn't for me and here's what i want to say i know you've switched on forces right i i, I know and sometimes we don't we don't um, see them for what they are or we don't own the fact that we've already done this in our lives we've you've already switched certain things on that were maybe not switched on a few years ago right? You've already maybe become more perceptive, more empathic, more sensitive, more intuitive, more psychic, right? You've already become maybe more powerful of a healer in yourself. You've already become, we've already been doing this. Now it's just a time of it's increasing and it's happening quicker. The quickening, like we could call this moment in time, the quickening, the quickening, the quickening. And we also have this capacity, in my belief, this capacity to consciously choose the quickening, <laughs> right? To consciously choose to get into this river that's leading us down to the great becoming, to our great becoming, your potentials unfolding, your awakenings, right? So it's this choice, this, this choice to do this consciously, or, you know, we could do it going kicking and screaming and then that could be fun too. You know, that could be fun too to do it unconsciously kicking and screaming. Um, I think for me, the more fun route is to do it consciously. <laughs> um, so anyways, let's talk about how we can be a little more aware of this and how we can work with this a little bit more. Let's dive into Sedna. I feel like this is really important. So Sedna is when the sun and the moon, it's a full moon, the sun and the moon are opposing, right? So Sedna's at zero degrees, the sun's at two um, of Gemini. The moon's opposing. So Sedna's right up in the mix. This is really illuminated. It's also linked to Pleiadians. So for whatever that's worth, that might be something that you kind of tap into and you're like, ooh, right, okay. So it's in the area of the chart that is associated with Pleiadians. And so you can just, maybe that sings to you, maybe that sparks something. You can go deeper down a rabbit hole with that if you feel to. But Sedna 
is a feminine archetypal energy. And essentially it was her going from human form to goddess form. So going from mortal to immortal, going from um, like mundane, right? Like mundane to um, mystical being. And just feel into that for ourselves. Like I know for myself, I'm much more of a mystical being than I've ever been. I, I know for myself, I have many more, um, I don't know, we could say like superpowers switched on or um, I'm tapped into much more of my potential that I didn't even know was a potential 10, 20 years ago. So just feel into that. Hmm. <laughs> it's uh, like supernatural. It's like it's like we're all becoming supernatural in our own extraordinarily unique ways. In our own. So feel into that. You're becoming supernatural. And this is such a moment in time to just meditate on that, reflect on that, feel into that. Like, what are my supernatural capacities switching on? You know, if Jupiter and full moon and such is, is blowing up our upper limits, is blowing up our glass ceilings, blowing up our preconceived notions of self, blowing up who you thought you were and the limits you thought you had. <laughs> and you just kind of let go into that. And this is also a little bit of Neptune. We'll talk about this. Neptune's up in the mix, right? So Neptune brings in this capacity to um, like shamanically walk through the world where you walk, you walk through the world one foot in both realms, right? The veils are thin when Neptune's involved. The veils are thin. So the seen and the unseen are accessible. And this is a moment in time, a full moon, where that's a really good visual. That's a really good practice is to feel into one foot in both worlds. What if I were to walk through this world, this moment in time, in, in both the seen and the unseen, the seen and the unseen. I'm going to have my shamanic eyes on. I'm going to have my shamanic senses on. I'm going to walk through the world um, in this way right? In this way, it's a much more open perspective. Um, we're able to perceive much more. You're able to perceive like your energy body. You're able to perceive um, much more in your environment. That's Sagittarius. That's full moon in Sag. It's full moon in Sag. It's also this Pleiadian aspect of the chart helps to open that, helps to expand that. Gemini? Gemini is all about mind expansion. Gemini is all about the neuro pathways and things being able to move fast. And it's Gemini is also like the twins, but it's not just either or. What the twins do is they bring us to the third path, the third way. Feel into that. There's some energy and there's some mysticism. Just feeling into those words, the third way. Feel into that for yourself. That's something you could very deeply dive into and meditate on. It's the third way, the third way, the third way, the third way. Um, okay. So let's go back to Sedna. So Sedna, this transformation into becoming, and just let's ground it down, like make it reality for you. You just moving into newer and truer, right? We don't have to get all mystical and woo woo la la about this. This is just you moving into newer and truer, you moving into your next greatest potential, you blowing through your glass ceiling, your upper limits and moving into something that is is the embodiment and the expression of more of your soul gifts, more of your uh, unique potentials, the expression of it. it's like we're being pushed into them, right? We're, but it's not a, it's not a like fire to the face kind of being pushed into them, right? It's not like a ferocious, fierce being pushed in them. It's almost like a, an expansive. Holy smokes, this is so big, it's so much. This is Sagittarius, this is Jupiter all up in the mix, conjunct Venus, they're all moving into Gemini, right? This is like a whole oh, little, like, that's, that's the kind of transformation that this feels like. It's almost like, oh my God, this is too big, it's too much. Oh my gosh, so, I'm so ungrounded. Oh my God, it's so big, it's so big. But it's almost like, can you just let it expand you out into the greater becoming that you're meant expand you out into the greater being truer you that you're meant to expand out into. That's another powerful meditation that you could do. Uh, 
I just held a three-day challenge over the weekend. Um, it's Monday as I'm filming this, the 20, 20th. Just held a three-day challenge. And what we expanded into, I am telling you, this energy right now is wild. It is big. It is powerful. And it is... Um, <laughs> It is grace-filled, but it's almost like it's so much grace can barely stand it. So just feel into that. Just just feel into that for yourself for a moment. Um, whew, all right. Let's keep going with Sedna. There's a little bit more here with Sedna. Um, let me just pause for a quick minute. For those of you who are thinking about joining Rewilding with the Archetypes, this year-long immersion that doors just opened to yesterday, we will work with Sedna. We will very much do archetypal alchemy with Sedna. We will very much do archetypal embodiment with Sedna. This will be one of the 36 archetypes that we work with in immersion. Um, so just in case you have joined immersion already or you're feeling into it, know that Sedna will be one of the archetypes. There is no way she is too loud and too powerful in this whole year, in all of 2024 into 2025, because she's going to bounce back and forth um, between Gemini and Taurus before in the retrograde cycles before she fully makes it. So it's just powerful. She's on these super power points, super power points, super power points. Um, and to me, it's one of the greatest archetypal energies that we can personally work with. There's so much that she wants to activate, um, awaken, illuminate um, in us. It's like an emerging archetypal energy of the moment. Um, so if you're curious about that, doors are open until Thursday, actually this full moon, isn't that wild? Um, to the archetypal immersion. It's a year long journey, uh, 36 archetypes, uh, live retreats in, not in person, live online retreats with me monthly, live wisdom circles. There's like thousands of dollars worth of bonuses in there. Um, I'd love, I'd love to share it with you if that's something that sings with you. If archetypal embodiment, working with all the different Archetypes we talk about here in astrology, here on the podcast, right? Mars, Venus, Jupiter, Uranus, Neptune, Kali, Lilith, Medusa, Lolita, right? Sedna. Uh, so if that sings to you, details are below. But the doors will close on Thursday, this full moon, uh, because we start the 24th. So I start, kick off our space, our journey with a live circle um, on the 24th uh, Friday. So that sings to you time is now I will never do this one again <laughs> so I know I've gotten that question too people are like I'll do it the next time around I will never do this one again because the archetypes are coming through now they're being created in this year-long immersion I will not hold a year-long immersion again um, with the archetypes so if this is singing to you. Uh, it's the thing that changed my life. It's the thing that brought me into rewilding. Uh, it's the thing that brought me out of being a scientist, <laughs> right? And pre-med and all of that stuff. And then I was in sales and corporate world for a long time. And it's what brought me into founding rewilding for women and founding rewilding and this work, which is my life work. Um, it was all of my work with the archetypes, this archetypal embodiment, archetypal alchemy um, that really opened up all these capacities and aligned me with what I really came here to do. All right, so anyways, details on that are below. Let's talk a little bit more about Sedna. Um, so Sedna, um, in, in this particular energy, right, this feminine energy, this goddess energy, she transforms from human into goddess, right? From mortal into immortal. She awakens to her power. She awakens to her magic. She awakens to her gifts. But what has to happen is she has to have her fingers cut off by her own father. Let's feel into what that means. Let's feel into what that might mean. To me, one way of looking at this and feeling into this for ourselves is what must we let go of? What are we clinging on to? She was in the myth clinging on to the side of a boat clinging on, clinging on, safety, security, the only thing that she's ever known, she was clinging on, she was holding on for dear life. Now think about that in our lives. What are you clinging on to? What are you holding on to? Safety and security, the old. What in the old are you still holding on to? What kind of like safety, security? Well, this is what's known, so I'm going to keep holding on to it, right? And her father chops her fingers off, chops, chops her fingers off. <laughs> now, 
She then, you know, sinks to the bottom of the ocean and that's when her transformation comes. But this is like an age old myth. The transformation doesn't come until we let go of the old, the death for the rebirth. And so feel into that, the death for the rebirth. Now, Pluto is, where are my notes here? Um, Pluto's all up in the mix. I don't know where he is in my notes. Um, but just know that Pluto's all up in the mix. That's death for rebirth. That's deep transformation. Um, that's happening during this full moon. It's just, it's just wildly, perfectly aligned. All right. Let's feel for a moment. Let's talk about this Venus-Jupiter conjunction. So on this full moon, there's also Venus is conjunct Jupiter. Venus conjunct Jupiter. That's blessings. That's the benevolent. That's the grace. Now feel into Venus. That's our feminine, our relationships, our love, the heart, matters of the heart. So feel matters of the heart being expanded. Deep heart callings um, being illuminated. The feminine sensual nature in us being opened up more, more energy being aimed at the feminine sensual aspect of us. This can be feminine awakening. This can be a lot of feminine awakening, right? Awakening to more aspects of the sacred feminine, right? Like Sophia, if you were in the challenge this weekend, we woke up to Sophia and opening up like a feminine awakening in self. We worked with ancient primordial feminine and that was an opening and awakening to that aspect of the feminine. So to me, this is also feminine awakening, feminine awakening and just feeling into aspects of the feminine that want to awaken in us. Again, this archetypal immersion, if you're like, oh, I missed the challenge, that stinks, right? Archetypal immersion, we're waking up to, you know, at least 20 of those archetypes will be feminine, probably more, probably more like 24 will be sacred feminine aspects, sacred feminine archetypal energies, goddesses that we'll work with there. Um, Okay, so that's Venus um, conjunct Jupiter. She then moves that same day she moves into Gemini. So now she's changing signs, moving out of Taurus. Taurus is her home sign. So the feminine in her soft, sensual, earthy, embodied home sign. She's moving and she, she's moving into Gemini, which is quickening. It's a quickening, right? This whole season will feel a quickening. Like the sun has already gone into Gemini, right? Um, Venus will go into Gemini, Jupiter's going into Gemini, Mercury, Gemini, right? Everything's going to be, it's Gemini season. And so there's a quickening. It goes from Earth, Taurus, into air. So Venus, the feminine, is going into air. So it gets lighter. It gets lighter. It gets quicker. It gets lighter and it gets quicker. So you can kind of feel into that for yourself too. Um, how that might show up for you um, in this awakening of the feminine. And so to not push against it, because I know sometimes we're like, wait, she's moving out of her home sign. That's so sad, right? But you just go from like earthy feminine awakening practices into air feminine awakening processes, right? It's why we worked with Sophia this weekend, because she's wisdom in the wind. She's the feminine wisdom in the wind. She's the feminine in the air. So it's not like it's, it's, it's bad. It's not like, oh my gosh, no, there's no more feminine awakening. She's out of her home sign. No, it's just different. It's just different. We're able to just access different aspects of the feminine when she shifts out of earthy into air. It just becomes different. It just becomes different. So feeling into that, right? That might, that might gift you in some way. Okay, uh, let me feel. This is the aspect that I've been dying to get to. I love this one. Um, okay, so we have Venus conjunct Jupiter in a sextile to Neptune, right? We've talked about Neptune. Neptune um, being the mystic, being the uh, thinning of the veils, right? The thinning of the veils. We just talked about Jupiter and Venus, right? Feminine awakening, um, uh, and they're both benevolent. It's like the two benefics are together. So it's also just an enormous amount of good luck, an enormous amount of grace, right? So an enormous amount of good luck, an enormous amount of grace right here in a sextile with the mystic, all right? The mystic, right? Like, th this is stunning, the mystic. 
they are in a finger of fate, or you could call it a finger of God, pointing right at the goddess Homer. This, this is rare. This is wild. For this to be happening on a full moon, this is unbelievable to me. I'm going to tell you what this means or give you some words so you can feel into what it might mean for you. Homer is goddess of, um, let me just feel, I want to, I want to get these words so right for us. She wants to birth things. She wants to give birth. She wants to create. She's very fertile. She's a fertility goddess and she's so fertile. Like, like she's just like births babies out of every aspect of herself. She's just incredibly creative, right? Just like if you just give her half a second, she'll just birth things. But what she's doing is she's birthing things. And the birthing process is like the taking an inspired idea and bringing it into the world. That's the magic. That's the magic. And we've got all this mystical energy, this benevolent energy of Jupiter, Venus, right? Who's right up here in Pleiades, Sedna, right? All of this like deep transformation for opening up to potentials and pointing right at an archetypal energy, a goddess energy that literally bursts it into the physical. I don't know what could be better. <laughs> I don't know what could be better. Practices around this moment in time could be um, <laughs> like you are birthing yourself anew. You're birthing your world anew. What are you, what inspirations and ideas are you bringing into the world? You know, you're taking it out. This is an alchemical process. You're taking an idea, an inspiration, and you're bringing it through and you're making it manifest. Even if that's a word, even if that's like this, this to me, I'm making something manifest. I'm literally like bringing ideas, inspirations through to something that you, that is in the world, something that exists in the world. So feel into that. What is it that you're bringing through and making exist in the world? This is extraordinary. This is an extraordinary moment in time. It's an extraordinary moment in time to... Um, I want to say this part too about this particular lineup and this energy. It's an extraordinary moment in time to plant a seed, to, to not necessarily birth something. It's also to potentially get pregnant with something, right? It's to potentially, okay, that is actually where I'm at in this process is I just got pregnant with an idea. I just got pregnant with an idea or the very start of it just came through. I'm just planting the seed for it now. It's going to need water. It's going to need sunlight, right? But in nine months from now or six months from now or a year from now, right? It will, um, it will be something that brings me, feel this, that brings me into my supernatural state. That brings me, right? Because we're talking about our evolution, your evolution, you're evolving into newer and truer you, you're evolving into your greater potentials, you're embodying them, embracing and expressing them, right? And so maybe it's now you're planting seeds, making choices, decisions. I know some of you, it will be this immersion. Some of you will join this immersion and that's your seed planting. That's your seed planting to awaken to the supernatural in you, to awaken to all those gifts and those potentials and those possibilities. For some of you, it will be many other things, right? It's many other things. Um, for me in rewilding, like I can point to different things um, right now and I can point in my personal life of different things right now. Um, but it's like, uh, the, 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 there's a power in, a, in the yes right now. You know, the yes. Like there's a magical email. <laughs> magical email. It's not magical. Um, I, I think everything is magical, right? Like I, I just, I see the whole world is just like mystical, miraculous, and magical. And it's just stunning um, when we can open our vision to see the world um, maybe in more more the reality that it is, you know? Uh, it's like waking up from the matrix, you know? Like you take the blue pill or whatever color pill that was in the matrix and you're just suddenly like, oh, wow, this is, shit, this is amazing. Um, but just, just yesterday I received an email um, 
out of the blue, very surprised, out of left field. Um, and I can feel the grace in it. I can feel the gift in it. And I can also feel my choice if I don't have to respond to this email. But it's literally an email that if I do respond to this email, my house will most likely just sell in the response to an email, right? Which will then lead to the opening up of another whole chapter of my life, right? But I have to say yes. I have to say yes to this like grace bomb dropping into my inbox out of left field from these beautiful people who just want to buy my home, right? It's, it's like that, but we have to say yes. So it could be very easy. So here's the thing. It could be very easy to not believe it could be this good, to not believe that this much is on offer, to not believe that we're capable of it, right? And so stay in this um, in this mystic, lean into Neptune, stay in this mystic, unlimited possibilities, unlimited potentials, because that's the gift of this moment. The gift in this moment is not to be practical and realistic and grounded. We will ground it in. We will make it practical. We will get realistic about it. But right now, the moment is let's stop limiting ourselves because those conditioned limits are stopping us from stepping into our potential. They're stopping the grace from coming. They're stopping the benevolence from coming. They're stopping the good stuff from happening. The good stuff, like the amazing email showing up in your inbox for the new job, the amazing human being showing up in your Tinder profile or inbox, whatever, for the amazing new relationship. Like we have to go into like, this state of, it's almost like the state of, I, of like, I don't know why I want to use the word disbelief, like disbelief for belief. It's like, I don't know, like nothing, n nothing is unbelievable. Nothing is unbelievable. Like miracles are so happening all of the time, but I have to get into the slipstream of them. I have to get into the slipstream of them or I will block them. I will stop them. I will deny them. That's what this week is about. It is amazing. It is amazing. Um, here's the last thing I would love to say um, is, let me feel for a second. <laughs> um, I'll share this. Does this feel right? Yeah, this does feel right. I'll share this little practice from the challenge because I know so many of you were with me this weekend for the rewilding challenge. And if you weren't, it doesn't matter. That's, that's great. Um, <laughs> but something that can really help in this moment in time you know, when it's so expansive, it's so graceful, it's so benevolent, you know, and we can like, ah, and we have to make decisions, you know, like I have to make a decision about, do I respond to this email? I have to make decisions all the time. Um, and it's like, just sit in our center point, just drop into your center point, lean back into wisdom self, like your wisdom self. We also did this practice where we put um, our soul self in front. It was like a soul train, right? And we were like, all right, soul self, true self, high spirit self is the engine of the train. You know, my left brain logical can be the caboose, right? All these other parts of myself, they get to be here. But I want my true self, my soul self, my wisdom self, my high spirit self as the engine of the train. And so you just sit in your wisdom self, centered, soul self, wisdom self is that front moving, right? Engine of the train. And then feel into, do I respond to this email? Fuck yeah, I respond to this email. Fuck yeah, I let the grace in. Fuck yeah, I let the magic in. Right? So for decisions that you might need to make or doors that are opening that you don't know if you should walk through, right? Or opportunities that are arising, how to take action, you know, how, how are we called to move forward in this moment in time? That's what I would suggest. That's a practice to lean into, right? And move from soul, move from true self, move from high spirit self, because high spirit self does not have those limitations that our ego self has, right? That our self-absorbed conditioned self has. Like, well, I'm not worthy of someone just wanting to miraculously buy my house and then I don't have to list it and I don't have to do all the things that I would have to do to try to prepare a house, to sell a house, to da 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 right? Like, oh, 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 open up, open up. Not just to the potentials coming in from outside of ourselves. This one can be even harder. To the potentials arising inside of ourselves. Open up, 
open up to the gifts coming online, the potentials arising inside of yourself, the dormant capacities, right? Waking up and coming online. All right, so much love to you all. Uh, I might see some of you, I know I will see some of you. I already am seeing some of you um, in Rewilding with the Archetypes, that year-long immersion. Um, that's the big one, that's the thing I'm the most excited about. It will not come again. This is one time that I will be holding the space because they are coming through now. Um, and that's it. Uh, so if that sings to you, you'll find the details below. We'd love to share it with you. If not, I will see you when I see you, where I see you, and how I see you. I always love seeing you all in the comments. I love seeing you in the Facebook group. If this serves, maybe hit the thumbs up button. Subscribe if you don't want to miss the next video, the next podcast, the next astrology update. Um, and just gratitude, right? Like gratitude, gratitude that we get to do this. We get to have these conversations. We get to really go for it. Thank you all for those of you who've hung on until the end, uh, it just means the world to me that we get to co-create these spaces um, and that, I don't know, we have the freedom to fucking blow past these um, barriers, these boundaries, these glass ceilings that we've had, these limitations that we've had that have been put on us. Um, and yeah, if there's anything I can share, it's just like, let's go for it. Let's fucking go for it. All right, so much love to you. <laughs>